the sound of a rabbit scurrying across the desert floor. Many hundreds of years ago, these would not have been the only sounds you would have heard in the desert. You see, these desert lands were once home to the first Americans, the Native Americans of the Southwest Desert. You would have heard the sounds of their voices, their songs, their music, and their lives. Sego Scanango. My name is Digali Wakwa. She sings. Or you can call me Joanne Shenandoah. I'm a Native American Wolf Clan member of the Oneida Nation, the Iroquois Confederacy. Native Americans have lived on these desert lands for thousands of years. Today I would like to share with you the story of the Native Americans of the Southwest. One way we've come to know about early Native American culture is through artifacts dug up by archaeologists. Artifacts are things like pottery, jewelry, and tools. By exploring artifacts left behind, we can learn a lot about what life was like for the first American people. You may wonder, how did the first Americans come to live on this land? Well, many scientists believe that thousands of years ago, much of the Northern Hemisphere was covered with huge sheets of ice called glaciers. This was the Ice Age. The cold temperatures caused more and more water to freeze and the level of the oceans dropped. When this happened, a land bridge crossing the sea between Northeast Asia and North America was revealed. Bison, caribou, and other large animals crossed over the bridge and the Asian people who hunted these animals and depended on them to survive followed. The people settled all over North America and formed groups or nations, becoming the first Native Americans. Some of these people settled in the Pacific Northwest. Others settled in the woodlands of the Northeast region of America. Still others settled in the Great Plains. And some people traveled south to the desert lands of the American Southwest. Today we call these people the Native Americans of the Southwest. These people formed groups or nations like the Hopi, Zuni, Apache and Navajo. These people were some of the first Americans, the Native Americans of the Southwest. Much of the Southwest is desert. The land is uneven with plunging canyons, sharp cliffs and hills with flat tops called mesas. The Southwest is hot and dry. The sun shines almost every day, and there are not many trees to provide shade. Rain almost never falls, and there are very few rivers and streams, so water is sparse. However, despite the rigorous environment, many Native American people made their homes in the Southwest for thousands of years. First, the Native Americans of the Southwest found shelter in caves. Then, some people began to form bricks out of clay mixed with grass. It was called adobe. They used these bricks to build houses called pueblos. Pueblos were constructed on the sides of mesas. Pueblos were built with the help of everyone in the village. Men would build the structures, and women would put on the adobe. Small windows and doors kept pueblos dark on the inside. Living in one felt like living in a cave. Inside it was cool during the day and warm at night. To get in and out of the adobe houses, ladders were used. Ladders were made of wood. The ladders were pulled inside when they weren't being used, and this kept unwelcome visitors out of their homes. Pueblos were like modern-day apartment buildings. 
They could be built to stand up to seven stories high, and inside they were divided into many different rooms. Hundreds of people could live in one pueblo. Each family had at least two rooms to themselves. As the family grew, more rooms were built on top. Pueblos also had common rooms, which were shared by everyone who lived there. At the bottom of every pueblo was a special round room called a kiva. Kivas were used for special ceremonies. Paintings of spirits decorated the walls. Men gathered to ask their spirits for a good harvest, to bring rain, and to keep them healthy. Only men were allowed inside kivas and were able to perform spiritual ceremonies. In the land of the Navajo, the people built a different type of home. It's called a hogan. There are two types of hogans, the male and the female hogan. The male hogan has two legs and is pointed at the top and is made of mud and sand. It is used for many ceremonies. The doorway always faces east to meet the rising sun. This way, the hogan and the family that lives inside can greet the sun the first thing in the morning. The female hogan is shaped differently. It is a round dwelling with a domed roof. The dome is covered with dirt and tree bark, while the outside walls are filled with tree mark and clay mortar. Inside, wooden poles about five feet tall line the walls, and above them is a framework for the ceiling, which consists of poles laid on each other in a circular fashion. The hogan, because of its thick earthen walls, is cool during the heat of the summer and warm during the winter months. Southwest Native American people were quiet and peaceful. There was little fighting. Men and women worked equally hard to support their families. Men provided the food by planting squash, beans, and corn. Women helped in the field. Men also hunted for wild turkeys or rabbits. Women were in charge of the homes. They prepared the food and cooked meals. Corn was eaten at every meal, but in different ways. Native Americans knew over 50 different ways to cook corn. The most popular way was to grind the corn until it was very fine, like flour. Daily duties such as fetching water, then washing clothes. Women also weaved baskets, made pottery, and created jewelry. Children helped with household chores. Young boys learned how to farm, hunt, and make tools from their fathers. Young girls would practice preparing food and cooking meals alongside their mother. They learned the art of making pottery, basket weaving, and sewing too. The dry climate of the desert didn't make finding water easy, so southwestern natives invented ways to preserve what little water they had. They would store rainwater in ditches near the crops and use it to water the crops. The culture of the southwestern nations reflected the land around them. Clay pottery was decorated with paintings and carvings. They were called talking pots because the pictures told a story. Most clothing was made of cloth, although sometimes it was made of animal skin or fur. Some men wore skirts with belts and others wore pants. Women wore long dresses and before they were married, they wore earrings. After marriage, women wore their earrings on their necklaces. The Southwestern spirituality reflected the people's peaceful nature. They believed in loving all people, plants, and animals. Children were taught to be kind to everyone and everything. Cruelty was not tolerated. If a Southwestern Native American was unkind, everyone in the village would stop talking to him or her. This was called shunning. 
Southwestern nations believed in many kachinas or spirits. They made kachina dolls to represent the spirits and to teach children about them. They were made of dried cottonwood root and painted. Kachina dolls were sacred objects and were treated very gently. Southwestern native nations like the Hopi, Zuni, Apache, and Navajo lived in the deserts of North America for thousands of years. However, they were uprooted by American soldiers during the Civil War. You see, Americans wanted their land. Soldiers destroyed the Native American crops, lands, and homes. Many Native Americans were killed. Many nations were forced to migrate to reservations. Land set aside for Native Americans only. It's important to know and understand the fascinating history of the Native American people. It's the story of their past. But it's also important to realize that today, many Native Americans don't live on reservations. They live in towns and cities just like you, and their lives are not much different than other Americans. What truly is important is that Native American people preserve their customs, culture, and spirituality, just like other American families preserve the customs and cultures passed down from their parents and grandparents. And even though the lifestyle of today's Native Americans has changed, they know the value of teaching the truth of their ancestors, the first Americans.